saying Tom Lee, I'm going to say the last name to make sure I get it correct. Uh, school system strengths and challenges. How would you summarize the education system's major strengths, the immediate challenges it faces, and how to focus those strengths to solve those challenges? The major strengths that we have is we have a, a very good uh, superintendent, we have very good curriculum. Uh, we started uh, with uh, uh, excellent schools three years ago. A couple of the buildings were excellent. Now they're all excellent and one's excellent with distinction, so we are improving uh, in the education in the, which we should be. Uh, the challenges are, as we stated before, the big challenge is finances. And uh, there are some areas of finances that I think uh, we need to take a look at. Uh, we may have uh, top heavy administration. Uh, as I emphasize may, I have not been on the board and haven't been able to study that. But I do know that there are some tax issues that uh, we're lagging behind them. My understanding is there's 377 thousand dollars due to due to the school from the county in, in taxes that haven't been uh, paid to them this year, and uh, there are also taxes to Sunco, well, not Sunco, uh, the Rockies Express Pipeline, and also from Duke Energy that uh, have to be taken a look at. And uh, those things are in litigation, I guess, the state. Uh, I will tell you that I've had personal experience with the state. And I have no problem going to the governor if I have to. Um, I'm like a bulldog. Um, I've talked to many presidents of many companies uh, to get what I, what I need, what I'm after. Tom Burgle, thank you. Uh, every school district in the country, if you look at it, there's three things that are required. And Monroe has all three. Uh, obviously, you need staff, and we have one of the best staffs in the state in Monroe. It's been developed over a period of 10 years. The second one is curriculum, but the most important, the one that you cannot change easily, the one that you have what you have and you build on it, is the community, the families and the parents. Monroe is extremely fortunate to have a set of families that believe education is important, that work with their children, that come to school uh, and work with teachers uh, for appraisals, for discussions, uh, for meetings. We are very blessed in that sense. The reason that is so important is it gives us a base to build on that some other communities just do not have. Uh, I'm not going to lie, we're in a struggle right now. Uh, two months ago, the district discovered uh, expecting to end the year with about $400,000 positive in the bank. It's going to be $1.7 million negative. I've sat here for a long time listening to people discuss about the city's financial trouble. i got to tell you, from a school perspective, I would do anything to have the city's financial numbers that they have right now. The school situation is far from it, and I don't understand why there's not more uh, discussion on it. But again, we have the families, we have the kids, we have the curriculum, we have the teachers, we have the staff. We've just got to make it all come together. Hey, Tom, Tom Burke, the role of the board member, okay? Uh, is your role as a board member, to micromanage the affairs of the school system, or to be more like a policy maker, who delegates the responsibilities and accountability to the superintendent and staff. I've seen it happen in all kinds of ways. Um, the role of a board member is to create a setting for the district to serve as a link between the community and the schools. I'm not an educator. I am not one who has spent 30 years running a school. What I am is someone who has spent 10 years learning how to help schools move forward through policy governance. That is, you set up policies that allow the staff to be independent, to be creative, and to use their skills. If you look at the state of Ohio and the laws, there's really only a couple of things the school board is supposed to do. That is, to write policy and to enforce it to hire a treasurer, to hire a superintendent, to lead them, and if necessary, fire them. That is your job, is to create an environment for leadership and bring in educational leaders. And I think that is a positive way to move forward. Tom Lee, your thoughts on the role of the board member? Board member uh, should uh, go after the policy, set the policies and things like that. I do not believe in micromanagement. If i got to micromanage, I don't need someone. Uh, that's superintendent treasures, as 
Tom says that's the two people that are from Fort Worth. And I don't need them. So uh, uh, we I do not believe in micromanagement. We've got to set the policies. We've got to look down the road at what's coming to us. What's coming up, you know, we're talking about the belt in the city. Uh, yes, it will develop. Uh, we have two quarters, three quarters in Monroe. 63 quarter route of Fort 75, in my estimation. And uh, these will develop, these will develop fast if the economic uh, times get better. But, uh, so we have to be ready to plan what this is going to be student-wise for our school. And, and, and you can't build a building overnight. And you can't change your curriculum overnight. So you've got to have a place for these kids to, to uh, be. How are you going to handle with the, with the current buildings that you have? You've got to work at it. And you, but you, you cannot go to the taxpayer for an increase in taxes. That's, that's, that's a no right there. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll just keep it. Okay, uh, this has to do with maintaining an excellent rating. Monroe's already at the excellent level in Ohio system. Congratulations are appropriate, to say the least. As a board member, what can you do to keep at that excellent level? First of all, you've got to have the proper facilities, you've got to have the proper, uh, you know, education is changing daily. So is communication. So now, maybe we have to go to, to where we have the iPads. We get to the, where people work, work a lot on computer online courses, but you've got to keep keep it up with the Joneses, so to speak, in the education world. And how you do that is to maintain and let the staff know and the superintendent know that we are 100% behind them. Let us know what you need that we can afford to help get to where you want to be. Because you know I'm no educator, but they know the the particulars of what they need. Tom Birdwell, what can we do to keep that excellent? One of the most important things the district must do to have excellence in education is to look ahead, to look forward at what the trends are. It's not just appropriate to pass and to move forward kids on last year's curriculum or the years before. The question is, what is the Ohio curriculum going to be four years from now? What is it going to be five years from now? It takes that long in lead to get a curriculum in place, to get staff trained, to get it moved. What's going to happen at the federal level? And in those levels, in, the, in that degree, you've got to look forward to what's going to happen in the future. You've got to hire a staff that can look forward. And most important, you've got to keep a superintendent in place that has her thumb on all of those, his or her thumb, and can lead the district in those matters. Thank you. Um, school finances. Recently, it was reported that the schools had to borrow some funds to cover some unforeseen financial obligations. Regardless of the resolve of state issue two on the ballot, will there be, in your opinion, some local budget balancing challenges? And what are your thoughts on that first? Uh, there's definitely going to be a local budget challenge. Um, like I say, we are looking right now for fiscal year 12. We are in the fiscal year 12 right now at a $1.7 million shortfall. For next year, we're looking at a $1.4 million shortfall. Uh, that's more than a challenge. Uh, furthermore, there is money has been moved uh, out of the bond fund, um, and that money is going to have to be replaced. So above these two numbers, we're going to have to take money out of the budget to move money back to the bond fund and replace that. Um, I don't know how you describe that any way other than a challenge. I think that we are in a good position in you know, that, as contrary as it sounds, Right now, in a time when there's not a lot of population growth, is the best time that the schools can make the kind of changes that have to be made to face this challenge. Um, it, it takes one thing off the table. We're not growing and growing again. Thank you. Okay. I'll wait. go along exactly with what Tom has said. Uh, we definitely have a challenge, but it is a mutable challenge. And uh, there are, as I stated before, there are some uh, funds out here that are due to our schools. And if we got the funds that uh, we're talking, the funds come in that we're talking about, we're probably looking in the neighborhood of $750,000 for new schools. Now you're down, you're down, down as bad as it, is, uh, it looks right now. Uh, what I, well, the thing that I don't understand is, if an auditor came in here and ordered the books, which they did, why are we going to take a look at what the auditor said? I mean, uh, I haven't heard nothing. If we, were in, if we were in trouble, why was 
that brought up the time of the oil was done in the spring. So uh, these are areas that uh, until you get on the board, you can't, all you can do is suggest, but uh, you can't request it. Okay. Uh, this is the last question for the two of you. Why don't you keep that phone, please, in your hand? That's very similar to what we were asking, actually the same thing we were asking city council candidates before that. Um, you're both outstanding, and the third person is going to probably be outstanding as well. So why do you deserve to be selected? Why are you the best for the job? Well, first of all, uh, I think there's three good candidates running. Uh, I'll say this about myself. Uh, I've been involved in Monroe for many, many, many years. I spent 42 years in volunteer fire department, so I've been involved there with the schools, graduated from Monroe, uh, and been involved in many, many Monroe uh, activities, Monroe churches, uh, and currently the Methodist Church on many, pro on many uh, committees. So I take Monroe at heart. And uh, as far as the school, I've had experience in the school, I've had experience in, in the industry, and uh, to me, uh, we are putting out a product. The product we are putting out is an educated student. It's like uh, AK putting out steam. As an educated student, we have to put out the best student that we can, and uh, I look forward to, to working with the superintendent, working with the administration uh, to fight the battles that are ahead of us so that we can, uh, down the road, look down the road further after past our uh, financial issues to where we are uh, a, an excellent school with distinction in all buildings. I came into public school service in 1995. I don't know how many of you remember it, but Middletown fell a levy. Actually, they fell two levies in a row and went into financial crisis, much like Monroe is today. I worked with Treasurer Ed Coral. I stayed on his committee until 1999 when this, we decided that we could create a Monroe school and shifted my efforts there. So I've worked in a situation with a district that was in crisis and I helped bring it out of failure. In the time since, since 2000, I've gotten more time as a school board member on two boards than any other candidate, and frankly, than the entire board that will that is in place today, uh, if I count my service on the board. Is that important? It's especially important in times when we need structure, when we are limited in operations. Every member of the board is outstanding. I know them. I trust them. Three members only have 22 month service though. And experience is important too. I know in Mount Pleasant, the people here know the value of experience and I'm the candidate that can, that can bring that experience. At Butler Tech, when I went there, it was a mediocre school. In four years, we took it to become number one in the state in academics for career technology schools, number one in the state for cost per student. It, while we were the best academically, we were the lowest career technology school in cost in the state. And we did so while we doubled in our own. The experience I took there will help. The experience I've had in 10 years on the Monroe board, I can bring back. And I think I can work with the other members of the board who are, in their own ways, every one of them, outstanding people. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your standing up and moving on to serve Monroe in this particular way. Thanks, everybody.